Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillala. Wa man yudlil falahadiyala. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His assistance, and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Him from the evils of our own selves, and from the consequences of our bad actions. Whoever Allah guides, there is none who can lead him astray. And whoever Allah lets stray, there is no one who can guide him. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqati. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah with the fear that He deserves. And do not die except that you are in a state of submission to Islam as Muslims. Ya ayyuha nas, ittaqu rabbakum, alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa, wa attaqu Allah. الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا. O mankind, fear your Lord, the one through whom you demand your mutual rights. Fear your Lord, the one who created you from a single soul, and from that soul he created its mate. And from those two, he dispatched many multitudes of men and women. And fear Allah, the one through whom you demand your mutual rights. And Allah swears by the ties of kinship that He is a watcher over you. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, ittaqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadida, yuslih lakum a'malakum. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا O you who believe, fear Allah and say a word that is correct and truthful, straight to the point. As a result, He will guide you and, forg- and correct your actions. And whoever has obeyed Allah and His Messenger has achieved the great achievement. أَمَّا بَعْدْ فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرَ الْهَدِي هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَالشَّرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَا وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَا وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ As for what follows, then verily, the best speech is the book of Allah. And the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all affairs are the newly invented matters added into the religion. For every newly invented matter is an innovation, a blameworthy innovation, and every one of them is a straying, and every straying is in the fire. Today we thank Allah for giving us Al-Furqan, for giving us His revelation, and His legislation, and His guidance for us to live our lives by. We thank Allah for giving us, as a nation of believers, distinction, and honor amongst the nations. We thank Allah for this honor that He has made us Muslims. He has made us people who are distinct and stand out above the rest of the creation in the way we believe in our Lord, in the way we live our lives. From morning to night, 
Allah Ta'ala has given us the Furqan, the criterion, by which to distinguish between falsehood and truth, between what is correct and what is wrong. Allah Ta'ala has sent that revelation to His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for Him to convey to the four corners of the earth, to each and every place on earth, so that the proof will be established against the creation. And the people will hear the message about the right of Allah to be worshipped alone. Allah Ta'ala has made truth distinct and clear from falsehood in this book. He has made the truth stand out and be distinct and obviously clear and different from falsehood. Allah Azza wa Jal has made His Tawheed, the right that He has to be worshipped alone, clear and distinguished from the false claims made against Him by the people of desires, that Allah has partners, or that others deserve worship, or that you call upon others beside Him, and so on. Allah has made Islam clear from kufr. Allah has made iman, belief, clear and distinct, more honorable and noteworthy, clearly different than kufr, than rejecting His message. And Allah Ta'ala, with this distinction, with this honor, with this status that He has given the haqq, the truth, over falsehood, He has given likewise status, honor, and distinction to the people of the truth. The Muslims who worship Allah alone, they are distinct in their lifestyles. They are distinct and clearly different from the people who do not give Allah His right. Allah has commanded us to be clearly different from the disbelievers in our lives, in our belief systems firstly and foremost. We believe in Allah as He has described Himself in His book, not based on decisions and reasoned judgments or hypotheses made by people who reflect and ponder over the meaning of what Allah is. Rather, we believe in Allah as Allah has commanded us to in His book. We believe in Him, we affirm for Him justice in truth, complete and fair justice. We affirm for Allah love and mercy, that He loves His servants and He has mercy on them. While we affirm for Allah that He has anger, and that He is angry with people who oppose His order. We affirm for Allah every description that comes in His book, in opposition, in contradiction to the rest of the people on this planet, who do not believe in Allah, and do not affirm for Allah the things that He Himself has described Himself with. We believe in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we follow him and we do not reject his message. We believe in every statement that is authentically established from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we believe in the previous prophets and we love the previous prophets as we love our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We do not behave like the people of the book who believe in some of the prophets and disbelieve in others, who prefer some over other with no distinction from the book of Allah or the message of their prophet. They reject the message of whatever they like from their own prophet. And they reject the message of Muhammad wasallam. And some of Ahlul Kitab, like the Jews, they reject the message of Isa, of Jesus salam, And they make distinctions between the prophets. So the Muslim is clearly different from the kuffar. The Muslim is distinguished and honored. He believes in Allah in the proper way. He doesn't follow what the majority of the people say. He believes in the messengers. He believes in the last day. He believes that he's going to be called to account for what he has done in this life. And he differs with the disbelievers in each and every facet of his belief. In the pillars of his religion, his salat, his prayer, does, is not similar to the prayer of the people of the book. He does not kneel on his bed and fold his fingers and clasp them and call upon other than Allah. 
He stands as the Messenger وسلم, stood five times a day for the obligatory prayers. Making takbirat al-ihram, saying Allahu Akbar. And placing his hands on his chest, the right one over the left one. And following the way that the Messenger وسلم, prayed to Allah in opposition, in contradiction to the rest of the people of earth that Allah has given us distinction over and granted us a status over them. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And for Allah is honor, and for His Messenger, and for the believers. When the believers fast, they don't refrain from speaking, they don't drink water during the day as the people of the book do, they don't refrain from other than the things that Allah has legislated them to refrain from. They are distinct and different from the rest of the people who offer acts of fasting upon other than the guidance of the prophets. When the Muslim chooses his food and his drink, he is distinct and he is different from the rest of the people on this earth. He eats the meat that has been slaughtered by the Muslims, or the meat that has been slaughtered by the Christians or the Jews, and he refrains from what is beyond that. He avoids pork, he avoids alcohol, he avoids things that he doubts the permissibility of. Because he is distinct and he is different. He is not an animal who goes everywhere and eats everything like the disbelievers are. Rather, he is distinct and honored. He has a lifestyle. From the morning when he wakes up, he praises Allah, makes mention of Allah, calls upon Allah relies upon Allah, his heart being attached to Allah, seeking refuge in, with Allah from the evils of the dunya. And the rest of his day he goes on in complete opposition to the rest of the people on earth who do not do these things. If he enters a bathroom, he's distinguished and honored. He has a religion that allows him to use a bathroom and answer or and relieve himself of filth in a way that is honorable, in the way of the messengers. He takes it as his religion to seek refuge with Allah from the filth of the bathroom. He uses his left hand and he doesn't use his right hand. He cleans himself with water. He's not a filthy animal like the disbelievers who urinate on their own selves, urinate on their own clothes, on their walls and on their floors. He knows that he is distinguished. He has a religion that raises him above that level. So he contradicts the people of the book. He contradicts and opposes the disbelievers with every step of his life. Having said that, in the second khutbah, we're going to look at some more specific ways that the believers who have been honored and distinguished by their Islam oppose and differ from the lifestyles and ways of the astray disbelievers in Allah. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد One day, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم as reported by Abu أمامة رضي الله تعالى عنه and collected by the Imam of the Muslims Ahmed ibn Hanbal in his famous Musnad, with an, with an authentic chain, an established authentic hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. He came out to the Ansar one day, some elders from amongst the Ansar. And the Ansar, these elders had all white beards, all gray, totally gray, all white beards. So he addressed them and he said, Ya ma'ashara al-ansar, O group of ansar, hammiru wa saffiru wa khalifu ahl al-kitab. Change your beard to red or change your beard to blonde or yellow and oppose the people of the book. Oppose the people of the book. So upon hearing this, the ansar understood the obligation of opposing the people of the book. And something came to their mind that the people of the book do, and that they as well do, that they do at the same time. And they wanted to know, do we oppose them on this too? They said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, 
إن أهل الكتاب يتسرولون ولا يتزيرون. The people of the book they wear pants, but they don't wear izars. They wear pants, but they don't wear izars. Look around you. The disbelieving people around you wear pants, and they don't wear izars. And izar is like that lower garment that wraps around. It doesn't have the legs cut out. So we're in need of the answer from the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We want to know how to oppose them. We want to know how to be distinguished in our Islam. We want to know how Allah has raised us and how we are to oppose them in our dress. We already know we keep our garments above our ankles and we oppose them because they wear their garments on the ground with arrogance. We already know that we don't wear silk and we oppose the kuffar who wear silk pants. We already know that the kuffar wear tight pants and they tuck their shirts into their pants. So we don't wear tight pants and tuck our shirts into our pants. But the idea of pants, is there something in our sharia, in our religion, in our legislation that we can get from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his response to this question? Ya Rasulullah, they wear pants and they don't wear izars. He said, فَتَسَرْوَلُوا وَأْتَزِرُوا وَخَالِفُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ then you wear pants sometimes, and wear izars sometimes, and contradict and oppose the people of the book. Wear pants sometimes. Wear izars sometimes, and oppose the people of the book. Notice he did not say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اِعْتَزِرُوا وَلَا تَسَرْوَلُوا He did not say, wear izars only, and do not wear pants. He said, تَسَرْوَلُوا وَاتَّزِرُوا وَخَالِفُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Wear pants sometimes. Wear izars sometimes. And oppose the people of the book. Furthermore, they had another idea. يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ يَتَخَفَّفُونَ وَلَا يَنْتَعِلُونَ Oh, Rasool Allah, the people of the book, they wear uh, long, they wear boots and shoes that are fancy or they go up above the ankle. And they don't wear sandals that are low and go below the ankle. So, did he tell us to only wear sandals and not wear shoes that go above the ankles? Or did he allow us, like with the case of the pants and the izar, to do both and oppose them by doing both? He said, تَخَفَّفُوا وَانْتَعِلُوا وَخَالِفُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Then wear shoes that go above your ankles and wear uh, sandals that are below your ankles and oppose the people of the book. This action that you're doing, not limiting yourself to one or the other, but wearing both, that is how you oppose the kuffar in this case. They had one more idea. They said, Ya Rasulullah, Inna ahl al-kitab yaqussuna ana, ana athanina, wa yuwathiruna sibalahum. O oh, Rasulullah, the people of the book, they are trimming their beards and they're growing their mustaches long and thick. So the Messenger ﷺ responded, showing us how to oppose them. Is it the case like the first two? We do one of them sometimes and the other sometimes. Rather here he showed us that we oppose them in both cases. In this case. He said... قَصُّوا سِبَالَكُمْ وَوَفِّرُوا عَثَانِينَكُمْ وَخَالِفُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Then, shorten your mustaches, trim your mustaches, and leave your beards grow, and oppose the people of the book. This is in contradiction to many of our brothers in Islam and their practice of Islam. Thinking to be neat, thinking to be clean, they allow themselves to have mustaches and they shave their faces. Our Messenger ﷺ loved us, wanted us to enjoy the distinction that we have, that the Islamic religion gives us over the people who are filthy in their beliefs. Their hearts are filthy in, in what they believe about Allah. The Messenger ﷺ wanted us to be distinguished above them with regards to what's in our hearts and with regards to what is a on our actions and what we do with our bodies and with our clothes. 
Some people say Islam is not the religion of beards and thobes. Then we say, what do you say about the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he talked about issues of beards and clothes? Islam is a complete religion. It's not the religion of your heart only. Islam is the religion of the heart and the body and the mind and the speech and the actions. The orders, the prohibitions, the halal, the haram. You cannot take some of Islam and say Islam is only about the heart. Allah knows what's in my heart. You don't have to see the goodness of my heart on my actions. That is bid'ah in Islam. That's irja, one of the worst and most dangerous avenues of destruction that the Muslims have strayed into. The statement that Allah knows what's in my heart and you don't have to see what's in my heart on my limbs. That's one of the oldest innovations in Islam that separated away from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal to believe that actions are not part of your faith, your iman. Believe and understand that every action you do is part of your iman. Every action you do to serve Allah and to worship Allah is iman. And your iman increases with every action. Not that the religion is about your heart only. Allah will judge your hearts. Allah will judge your actions. Allah will judge your statements. Allah will judge you for what you do and what you stay away from. Allah will judge you for what you order and what you forbid. So be aware of Allah. Be conscious of Allah in your actions. Stay away from excessiveness in the religion and stay away from being lazy and overly lenient in the religion. Take the middle course. Take the middle course explained to us by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In 10 days or so, we have the month of Ramadan coming to us. The month of Ramadan, in about 10 days. Another opportunity for us to oppose the disbelievers in our actions and in the way we worship Allah. We don't drink during the day. We don't refrain from certain kinds of foods only. We don't take a vow of silence for fasting. We refrain from food and drink, a sexual intercourse with our spouses, from vain talk, from the time, from dawn to sunset. And all of that is clear to us as Muslims. So let us take the honor that Allah has distinguished us with and oppose the people who disbelieve in Allah with our lives, with the way we worship Allah from the morning to the night. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to enjoy the increase of iman that comes with Ramadan, to allow us to reach Ramadan in safety and in good health. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the benefit of Ramadan and the benefit of our fasting and to keep us from those who spoil their fasting with bad speech, with backbiting and slander. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ